Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. Join me as we explore the fascinating period of early colonial Mexico and a crop that became a favorite import of its northern neighbor. The capture of Tenochtitlan in 1521 by Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés marked the beginning of a 300-year colonial period, during which Mexico was known as New Spain, ruled by a viceroy in the name of the Spanish monarch. Colonial Mexico was part of the Spanish Empire and administered by the Viceroyalty of New Spain. The Spanish crown claimed all of the Western Hemisphere west of the line established between Spain and Portugal by the 1494 Treaty of Tordesillas. This included all of North America. The Viceroyalty of New Spain had jurisdiction over Spain's northern empire in the Americas. Hernán Cortés had conquered the great empire of the Aztecs and established New Spain as the largest and most important Spanish colony. During the 16th century, Spain focused on conquering areas with dense populations that had produced pre-Columbian civilizations. These populations were a disciplined labor force and a population to convert to Christianity. Territories populated by nomadic peoples were harder to conquer, and although the Spanish explored much of North America, seeking the fabled El Dorado, they made no concerted effort to settle the northern desert regions in what is now the United States until the end of the 16th century. Mexico produced important cultural achievements during the 300-year colonial period, such as literature, as well as cathedrals, civil monuments, forts, and impressive colonial cities such as Mexico City. The syncretism between indigenous and Spanish cultures gave rise to many of nowadays Mexican staple and world-famous cultural traits like tequila, mariachi, jarabe, charros, and the highly prized Mexican cuisine, fruit of the mixture of European and indigenous ingredients and techniques. A major reason for the nation's culinary success is due in large part to the quality and quantity of its coffee beans. At the end of the 18th century, coffee was first introduced to the Mexican state of Veracruz from the Antilles. Mexico cultivates mostly shade-grown Arabica coffee, which grows particularly well in the southern coastal regions, conditions that, in Mexico's relatively cooler climate, are favorable for higher quality coffees. Wayne Armstrong of the 5 Minute History podcast kindly shares his brief look at one of North America's favorite legal stimulants. The history of coffee. As everyone probably knows, coffee is a hot drink, which is quite bitter until you add milk and sugar and which acts as a mild stimulant, with many of us claiming that we can't function until we've had the first cup of the day. In modern times, it's come to be presented in a number of different ways, each of which comes with its own unique name, including espresso, latte, americano, cappuccino, long black, flat white, or even triple venti half-sweet non-fat caramel macchiato. But where did coffee originally come from? And how has it evolved into what we know today? As far as documented records show, coffee has been enjoyed by people since around the 15th century, although some legends and unconfirmed reports indicate that it may have been around for much longer. One of these legends says that a Moroccan Sufi mystic, during his travels in Ethiopia, observed birds feeding on berries, and that these birds seemed to have an abundance of energy and vitality. When the mystic tried the berries for himself, he experienced the same effects. An alternative legend tells the story of a disciple of Sheikh Abu al-Hassan al-Shadili called Omar, who was exiled from Mecca to Usab, where he lived in a cave. In order to satisfy his hunger, he chewed on some nearby berries but found them to be too bitter. He tried roasting the berries to change the flavour, but this made them hard. He then tried boiling the berries to soften them, and thus discovered that the resulting brown liquid could be used as a drink and that the drink revitalised him and sustained him for days. His discovery earned him the right to return to Mecca, where he was made a saint, 
probably because the properties associated with the consumption of coffee were useful in the Islamic world as it enabled easier fasting during the day and wakefulness at night during Ramadan. Whatever the realities are of the early history of coffee, the evidence suggests that among the first places to be using coffee are in the country of Yemen, where it was used in its Sufi monasteries. From here it soon spread to places like Mecca and Cairo. By the end of the 15th century the use of coffee was widespread, taking in most of the Middle East. It had also by this time spread as far as southern India, Turkey and even the Horn of Africa. Coffee houses started to appear in Cairo, Egypt, as well as in Aleppo in Syria, and by 1554 they were springing up in Istanbul, the capital of the Ottoman Empire. A ban on the consumption of coffee had been imposed by religious leaders due to the apparent intoxicating nature of the drink, but this was overturned by the Sultan Suleiman I in 1524. The first reference to coffee within English texts appeared in 1582, with the word being derived from the Dutch equivalent coffee, spelt K-O-F-F-I-E, which itself was derived from an Ottoman Turkish word kave, K-H-A-V-E. The original Arabic word from which the Turkish one evolved was kawa, which referred to a type of wine which was thought to have been made from the pulp of fermented coffee berries. However, there are some suggestions that the word originated from kaffa, K-A-F-F-A, a kingdom in medieval Ethiopia which exported the coffee plant to Arabia. Whatever the origin of the word coffee, its progress through Europe started in Malta in the 1500s, through the slave trade, which saw imprisoned Turkish Muslim slaves continuing to make their traditional drink, even during the Great Siege of Malta in 1565 when these slaves were imprisoned by the Knights of the Hospital of St John of Jerusalem, commonly known as the Knights Hospitaller. The drink became popular in Maltese high society, and coffee shops also began to appear on the island over the next few decades. In 1645, the first coffee shop opened in Venice, and then, following the defeat of the Turks by the Holy Roman Empire at the Battle of Vienna, the first coffee house opened in Vienna using the supplies obtained from the spoils. It is also at this point that it started to become popular to add milk to the drink. Through efforts made by the Levant Company, coffee was introduced into England, with ever-increasing quantities being brought in by the British and Dutch East India Companies. The first coffee house in the country was the Queen's Lane Coffee House in Oxford, which was established in 1654 and is still trading today. The first coffee house in London opened later in the same year, and 20 years after that there were 3,000 of them across the country. In around 1720, a French naval officer by the name of Gabriel de Cleur took coffee plant seedlings from the main botanical garden in France to the island of Martinique in the Caribbean. A blight had affected the cocoa plantations there and so only three years later, coffee had replaced cocoa in most of them. By 1770, there were nearly 19,000 coffee plants on the island and from here the cultivation of coffee plants spread to the rest of the Caribbean islands as well as to Mexico. By this time, coffee had also appeared on the Isle of Bourbon, now called Reunion in the Indian Ocean. However, the plant that grew there produced smaller beans, and so it was deemed to be a different variety of Arabica. The coffee produced in Mexico and Brazil is descended from the Bourbon coffee plant. It took a while for the Brazilian coffee trade to become established, but by 1893, its coffee had been introduced into Tanzania and Kenya, which shares a border with Ethiopia the original birthplace of the drink, and so in only 350 years or so, coffee had completed its circumnavigation of the globe. As the world embraced the magical properties of the coffee drink, the demand increased exponentially, resulting in the coffee producers around the world needing to cultivate more coffee plants. Almost all of this large-scale cultivation resulted in the displacement and exploitation of the indigenous peoples of many countries, The harsh conditions under which these people had to work resulted in many uprisings which were brutally put down by the plantation owners. Since 1852, Brazil has been the largest producer of coffee in the world. In 2017, it produced 29% of the world's 9.2 million tonnes of green coffee beans, with its competition coming mainly from Vietnam, Colombia and Indonesia. 
The world's greatest consumers of coffee are the Nordic nations, with Finland at the top of the list, with each person consuming 12 kilograms of coffee per year. This is followed by Finland, Norway, Iceland and Denmark, with the United States ranked 25th. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride. <laughs> 